Welcome to the Westside Barbell mm. Podcast. Today's topic is Olympic weightlifting, which has been a commonly asked question since the Olympics are on right now. So, Lou, we'll get straight into this. Our first question, Lou, what do you think the future holds for USA weightlifting after their turnout in this Olympics? Well, as usual, it's going to be a sad, sad future. If they don't change, if you just repeat the same thing over and over, it's a sign of insanity. They've been doing this since 1972, since they dropped the press, and someone believes that speed is more important than strength. Strength is the most important component to lifting weights. If that wasn't true, you wouldn't have weight classes. Um, I have weightlifters here. I have one here right now from Israel, and it's typical. Uh, they don't have, everyone that's ever came here, they can't squat, and they have weak backs. Two primary things you must have to be a weightlifter. And uh, it's, uh, it's, just, it's really a, a sad state of affairs. They need a different set of training methods. I have a weightlifting book, and there's a book from China uh, about Chinese weightlifting, actually. And uh, what, uh, they, what one, how many golds, Tom? Seven. Seven golds. Seven golds and one silver. And one silver. Now, you know what? Monkey see, monkey do. That's all you got to do. And don't argue about, don't come up with excuses why they're so good and you're not. Because we got all the athletes. In my sport powerlifting, we rule the world. We got the same athletes you do, so I don't understand uh, this discrepancy between winning contests and breaking world records. In the last 16 months, we broke 12 all-time world records ourselves. So, uh, but you have to get a big squat and a big, big uh, amount of back strength if you want to succeed at uh, um, Olympic weightlifting. Nam Suleiman, for instance, was a 132 pounder. He front squat of 528 on a regular basis. He had a 435 clean jerk. So if you guys got a calculator, add that up. Uh, I believe his name was Lou from China, 154 pounder or so, uh, 578 front squat with a 440 clean and jerk. Then if you go on to years ago, um, Kristoff from Bulgaria, uh, their super heavyweight, uh, back then I believe he snatched 473, he had a 749 pound front squat, an 854 back squat. So why do people hear, I, I say, how much do you power a clean and jerk? They'll go 360. What's your, what's your front squat? 370. You know, that, that sport is four elements. You have, a, you have a, a, a two poles, you have the front squat and a jerk. Whatever you're weakest in, that's what you're stuck with. So, and you notice the Chinese do the drop, drop jerk now. They drop down into a full squat and stand back up. It takes an enormous amount of leg, leg strength to do that. But on top of that, you have to have a reserve amount of leg strength. You just can't be borderline on everything and expect to get new clean jerk records. It's not going to happen until you push up the squat by box squatting, which I've told these guys for years. Um, and also, the technique is incorrect in America. I used to think your technique was okay. We sell a book um, about the clean jerk technique. I want people to buy that book. I don't like to sell anything because I don't even work in the office. But if you guys want to be good, you got to change how you're lifting. You don't lift all with your legs. It's with your back. Look at the back angles. Uh, every one of these Olympic or world champions show the back angle. The bar is over. If you look at Lee James, go look at Lee James when he lifted for us. I believe he's the last legitimate good lifter we had. It almost looked like he's doing arch back, but over rows when he, when he pulled. You have to change what you're doing, or you're, it's, the next Olympics will be the same story and on and on and on. I, I've, I've rant and raved enough here. Why, what makes China so special? Like, why do they dominate so much? Because they're very strong. I watched a 154-pounder um, set the weights on a box. He got into a full squat, crawled under it with his butt about six inches off the ground, adjusted, and stood up at 484. What the hell? That takes an enormous amount of strength. They do snatch grip deadlifts. And if I said this, I'd be ran out of America. They do snatch grip deadlifts until uh, they actually round over or they can't get the weight off the ground. Now, if I told people, why are the Chinese doing it? All you got to do is do what the Chinese, it's on the, on the website, just get on and see what they're doing. Concentric squats. One thing, America, two things they don't do that destroys their lifts. One, no isometrics. You have to do, at the second pole, the bar gets there, and basically the weight now is slowed down to zero. Uh, so the weight is actually the same mass as what's on the bar. Uh, and so you need to do uh, isometric work there. My friend Jimmy Benjamin, he said two things. He was three-time national champion here, 336 clean jerk at 132 back in the 70s. And Jimmy said, box squat. I'm not making this up. Box squat was one of his best things for hips 
And also, he was set to bar uh, a different position, but one was right where the second pole is. He would pull up against the pin, hold it for five seconds, and he would add weight until he couldn't hold it for five. Then he would put the bar on top of the pin and power clean off that pin with no leg drive. And those two elements, he said, made him, that really helped him a lot. Lou, D did I answer that question? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get back into it. I'm sure time is okay. going to be yeah. over and over in this. Um, <clears throat> but for people who don't know. Oh, I got one more thing. Mm -hmm. You don't do any eccentric work. If you would, like again, Tom, what's this freaking book cost? Wait. About 25 bucks? $25. This could change your life. Managing the training of the weightlifter is how I started in 1982. I'm a powerlifter. I took this book, used their methodologies, and, and became only the strongest powerlifting gym of all time. The greatest female and male lifter out of this gym. And no one's even close. All right? I took their methodologies, applied it to my sport. If you don't go through this book, this tells you what will make a weightlifter. Um, and, uh, but you don't do any eccentric work. You have to do 10 to 15% of your training has to be eccentric. You just can't catch a weight and fall down. I mean, you guys, that's why you can't squat, all right? And when you catch a weight, you need to stop it. This is one thing I've really noticed. I have people come here, they'll do a power clean. I don't know what a power clean is, obviously, because they'll catch the bar high, go down to full squat, and come up. Well, when you catch a weight, you want to immediately stop it. The same thing as a def, ju a def jumps. When you land, you stop, and then you rebound. You want to catch that weight and rebound. And you're missing the whole boat. There's a lot of simple things that can really make a big difference, I think, in your training. All right, next, next please. Well, the, to build up upon that, for what people might not know is, what is your own personal experience with Olympic lifting and why it plays such a crucial role in Westside Barbell? Well, I Olympic lifted until I, I, after I graduated from high school, I immediately was drafted into the Army. So two weeks before I went in, in October of 1966, I went to a power meet. And uh, I went to that power meet, and I saw four would-be IPF world champions. And I said, I've never seen people built like this. I immediately switched sports at that point. But, uh, and I have no reason to lie about this. I had a 670 deadlift at 180. You know, I had the biggest toe in the world during 1973. 20 more than won the world's, 1655. I had a 665 squat, no gear, and a 670 deadlift with no gear, no Olympic belts, no wraps, no nothing. All right, I power clean a bar that did not revolve 320. I used the Olympic lifts to um, help my poles. All right, and so you you got to be immensely strong because I'm, I power clean 320 and 180 with a bar that didn't revolve. So you just you know you got to work like that. Then when you were like even to this day and growing up, what um who would you consider the greatest Olympic weightlifter of all time in our country? Right, just in general. Well, probably Alexis. He's set 80 world records. And if you look how he trained, he trained just like Westside conjugate system. You know, many weightlifters don't know about the conjugate They asked me, can I use the conjugate system? It came from the Dynamo Club and, and over in the Soviet Union in 1972, led by Dr. Medvedev and Verfushansky. It worked both for track and field and for Olympic weightlifting. And I followed the conjugate. I, I was in the conjugate. Bodybuilders did the conjugate. Everybody does conjugate. MMA is a conjugate, if you ask me. You go from kicking to punching to grappling to chokes. It's all switches. One, and you okay, you, you, don't, you don't get an arm bar, but maybe in the next round, you got an arm bar. You go back to it. And that's what the conjugate system is, constantly rotating spatial exercises to make sure I get into how we, why do you have to max out. Well, that's the next question <clears throat> on here, is what role does maximum strength play in Olympic weightlifting? It plays an incredible role. Because, I mean, like I said, if speed was the answer, why doesn't a 123 lift what a super heavyweight does? It's impossible. He doesn't have the mass nor the strength. So if you don't have mass, you must be stronger pound for pound. Your relative strength has to be stronger than a large man. Uh, here at Westside, and what the, basically now the Bulgarians would do six um, near maximal lifts above 90%, near, like a circuit max lift, 92 to 97, and on to all-time records, six in the morning, Take a half hour break, do six more, then come back in the afternoon, do six more. That's 18, six days a week. Plus, he did spatial pulls. A lot of people think all they did was clean drink stats. That's not true. Buy a book called The Pocket Hercules. You know, it talks all about NAMS training. You'll see how many spatial pulls he did. As he went on, they did stop doing so many spatial pulls. But I want to bring up a point, too. We don't have model weightlifters. I, I got guys coming, they lift 181, they're five foot ten. You got to be five foot one, five foot two. Let's get with the ball game here. I'm not, you know, I love basketball, but not in the NBA. I'm five foot five. 
Why, why I ain't a basketball player? Because I'm five foot five. You know, you can't be five foot ten, be a 181, and think you're going to succeed in Olympic weightlifting. It's not going to happen. Why? Because you have to be built to have a big squat and a compact enough to have a big, big amount of back strength. Am I correct in saying oh. in some of those books they have the measurements for the perfect weightlifter? Exactly. They're right in these books. Um, like you need to do Olympic weightlifting. I suggest the so Chinese do this. Chinese train very, very, very similar to us. Um, we do six lifts at above 90%. All right, we use two weights. We'll do two exercises. So let's say you do a power snatch and a, and a, and a squat clean. But you work up the first lift at 90 or above, then 90, you know, close a record and then a record. So that's three. Go to another exercise, do the very same thing. So you're getting six lifts at that, uh, at that time in, at 90% and above. Same thing for the squat. A squat, like a front squat, the back squat variation, or an overhead squat. No one ever talks about the overhead squat, you know. So that's, there's three variations that you need to do this with. And uh, by then by maxing out, because what I notice when I have weightlifters come here, they'll do set after set with 275. Well, I put 285, they can't freaking budge the thing. Their central nervous system has never been ex exposed to that extra amount of stimulus. Right now... Um, Ahmed, I wish he was here. I tried to get a hold of him. He's broke every freaking record. He's been here three weeks. Broke his clean, power clean, power clean, uh, fold clean, uh, push jerk, jerk. He's broke all of his records. How in the hell? I mean, in three weeks? You know, he came here, what, a year or so ago? Did this very same thing. Come back, went nowhere because no one pushes him. You don't need coaches, guys. You need training partners. Uh, you don't need no coach that's never lifted any big weights in the first place and never have you max out. If you don't max out, you're not going to get strong. Maximal strength is the key. Read it in this practice of science and strength training. It will explain why you have to do max effort weight training. Well, what's the relationship between max effort strength and all other forms of strength for weight? Okay, well, you know, a, a, a lot of football coaches have their people do uh, Olympic lifts, power clean, power snatch. I think that's fine. It's just two exercises. Does not build explosive strength. Only if you train between 30 and 40 percent. That's fast velocity training. That's where explosive strength is built. All right. It's not uh, if you're training 80. It's not. A, it's a speed strength sport. It's not an explosive strength sport. Explo uh, speed strength. We run three week waves. It was basically for a lot of team sports. But I found we. I mean, we broke so many in the last 60 months. We broke seven world records in the squat. Two in the bench. Three in the total. Okay. Um, so we run, uh, I'll tell you what you should run, 75% the first week, 80 the next, 85 the next. On the fourth week, roll back. Let's say you power clean, 75, we'll say six triples, and then you do the same thing in the snatch. All right, then 80 next week, then 85 the next. Then you roll back to the 75, so you go up five, five, you roll back 10 for, for recovery, and you change the exercise. You could be a clean and push jerk, or, you know, you could power clean, and uh, do an overhead squat. Just make all these variables. If you look at uh, uh, <clears throat> super training, it's got 100 workouts in there. They don't have two workouts in there. You know, these guys, what do you do? They tell me, they tell me, and I asked the lifter what they could do, what they do, and they could tell me in 15 seconds. It'd take me an hour to say what you have to do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's also in the fundamentals of spatial strength in one of these, uh, well, right here. Fundamentals of spatial strength by Verfashansky. It tells you about, uh, there's a hundred workouts in here, not one or two. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's just amazing to me, you know. And uh, you have to have lots of variations. I watched the guys, one of my disclaimers, all right, Now I watched his wife. It's called the document, American Documentary Weightlifting. She's crying in the documentary. She says, I haven't broke a record in a year. She's crying. We break a record every week. So there's something radically wrong. How do we break a record every week? When we break a record up, you know, Joe, Joe Dirt did stats. We break a record about 92 to 95% the entire gym every week in space. So exercise, not the clean and jerk, not the snatch, but, you know, you would do it in the power, power snatch, the close grip snatch, um, a front squat, a back squat, uh, you know, all types of exercises, including split cleans. People, why would I do that? I haven't done it 50 years. Well, because you got to pull the bar higher. That's why. It's a back exercise. You need to do good mornings. No one does good mornings. I have these guys. I mean, their back is so pathetically weak. It's ridiculous. That's why they stay vertical when they pull. If you stay vertical, 
You're only using leg drive. I've had coaches come here and say, oh, it's all legs. I said, oh, you're out of your mind. That's why you guys suck so bad. They're lifting bigger weights 40 years ago than they are today. So there's something radically wrong here. Uh, the bar, you must, your shoulders must stay over the bar as long as possible. The longer you keep your shoulders like this, the more hip snap. If you're straight up down, you got no second pull hips. I hope that makes sense to you guys. You got to be over the bar. Like again, go back and find some work, some uh, uh, pictures of Lee James. He's a perfect example of how you have to live. Chuck Noon, same thing. Bought a three eighty swat and um, three snatch, five bone clean jerk at two forty two years ago. Okay. How? So then, absolute strength is incredibly important. How does that um, lead to technical improvements? Um, all right. We do a lot of single joint exercises, you will know. But, you know, a lot of extensions, tricep extensions, back extensions, knee extensions, right? Mm -hmm. Hip extensions. Um, you uh, Maximal strength or strong muscle. If you have one weak muscle, it can destroy your technique. It will absolutely destroy it. If you don't have a strong enough lower back to stay over the bar, you can't stay over the bar. You know, if you got weak hips, you're not going to be able to get these big squats. So you have to do that. I've never seen a... You know, we pull lots of sleds, sleds, we push squirrel barrel. Short distance for us, we don't go miles. Fighters go miles. We go 60 yards, all right, like football players and so forth, power sports. And But you got to work single joint. But if, if you have a lagging muscle, you're going to fail. If you can always do these multi-joint exercises, like I said, the clean, the clean and jerk has four elements. The weakest one is where you're stuck. You can front squat 700 pounds, and you could clean 700 pounds. Uh, but if you can only jerk 300 pounds, you're stuck with a 300-pound clean jerk. So you got to bring these all up. You need to do a lot of stuff all pins where there's, a, a, you know, all concentric work. Um, you know, I, I, I've seen in three different countries good morning machines. You know, we have one. It's called a back attack. And people say, well, why do you need that? Well, because I looked at these films, and the greatest weightlifters in the world were using them. You know, I'm dumb, but not, I was born tonight, but not last night. Whatever they're doing, I'm going to do. That's all I know. That's why when this guy comes here, right away, I can get him to break records. It's really kind of sad in a way. So what um, Olympic lifters can benefit from powerlifting style training, but powerlifters should avoid training like Olympic lifters. You say that again? So the question is, um, explain how Olympic lifters can benefit from powerlifting style training a powerlifter should avoid training like an Olympic lifter. Well, there's nothing wrong with a powerlifter doing power cleans and power snatch, I believe. I think it's a very good, great exercise. No one does it, mm -hmm. but it's great for upper back, you know, just, and uh, so that's good. But I'm not saying an Olympic lifter should powerlift. I'm just saying you have to get a big squat and you have to have a big good morning. And, you, you know, you really need a deadlift. It is powerless. Like, I mean, the, the Chinese are doing it. If the Chinese are doing it, I'm doing it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they're having for dinner, I'm having that for dinner yeah. because those are some sick-ass strong people. They're just retardedly strong. And they're going there and they're passing all the drug tests that everyone else passes. That's all I know. I'm not into the drug testing anyhow, but they're, they're, they're going by the same rules of everybody and they're dominating. Find out why. They're, uh, here in America, I remember Drago years ago well, from Romania. He was the coach at the Olympic Center, and he said American weightlifters, their training isn't dense enough. By that, he means they train too slow and they don't do enough work. If you follow the percent training that I do, um, if you got a 400 clean and jerk and you train at 75%, which would be 300, and then, uh, you know, uh, at 75% and 80% would be 320, and then, of course, 85 would be 340, it's all based, you cannot overtrain because it's based on your strength. There's, there's nothing, there's no guesswork to this. When I bring a new person in, it takes no time at all. But we just, however strong they are, to use these percents. Why? Because that barbell has to move at a certain velocity. It's the same in weightlifting as powerlifting. You have to move at the same velocity. All right? So that way, that's how we keep all this in check. We never overtrain with the multi-joint exercises. Then let's say, Tom, you squat and your knees pulling. Well, what do we know? We know your hips and groins. We, we work on your hips and groin. We don't keep squatting because it's never going to change. You know, yeah. if you pull up deadlift and you round over terribly, we know you got to build up your back more. I mean, it's, you know, we look at the simplest elements. We change what's weak, and then it, it, and it actually becomes stronger than the other muscles. Then it's, a, it's like crawling up a ladder. This is weak. Now we got this stronger than that, and it goes right on up until we're breaking wood records. Do you think CrossFit influenced top-tier athletes to focus on competing for money 
versus competing Olympic Games, and the same goes for football? Uh, oh, it's got a lot to do with it. Uh, CrossFit is a great sport, and it's a great competition for CrossFit athletes, which is uh, non-directed fitness. I just wrote about this in my GPP chapter of my next book. And uh, you, you had to be sports specific. If you're going to train GPP, it must be very close to SPP, what your sport is. All right? It's not going to play, you know, you go out and play football if you're going to try and knock someone out, you know, in a fight. It's, it's got to be close. Everything has to be similar. GPP has to parallel SPP. How many Olympic weightlifters have you refused to train on Westside Barbell? Refused? Yeah. <laughs> really? They send them here. I bring them. But, I mean, it's, it's, but, it's, it's tough because they're not even, like, qualified to be a weightlifter. Would you take a high-caliber weightlifter? I'd, I'd take a high-caliber weightlifter, but he actually would need a training partner. What would it take for them to get here? Some decent lifts. And, you know, come here because, I mean, I could take these guys. And I took one kid. Mike Bergner sent me. He had a 300 clean. In three months, he did 330 clean. I had a guy come up. Uh, I won't say why. Well, I don't want to get into this. He criticized me for writing my weightlifting book. But one of his guys came out of his club, had a 340 clean for a year. At 45 minutes, with, he did 365 in my gym. I had a, 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 a assistant coach at LSU, an ex-quarterback, six foot five, with the same lift, 340, and did the very same thing. And he said, how did you do that? It was all by bands. 1967, Dr. Medvedev says you must use bands or cords. But because weightlifting is a momentum sport, you have to cut that momentum down. And, you know, like I said, you pick up a weight, it gets up to here, it actually reaches zero. That's why you do that. It, it comes to zero. So what if you picked it up and bond, band is pulling you down? Then you got to overspeed uh, to get underneath the bar. Also, the, the squat under is very important. If you use bands, you got to dive under that bar quick. And then as you stand up, you know, see, there's no perfect weight in the bottom or the top. If you used only bands, because the shrinkage would be too light in the bottom, maybe too heavy in the top. If you use only weights, the weights would be too heavy in the bottom, you never get up. See, so you need to use a combination of methods of training, bands with the weights. It does not distort any form. Uh, Shiko came here to visit me a couple years ago, and I got in an argument kind of with his interpreter. And he said, uh, speed is more important than strength. <clears throat> and I said, no, it's not. So... Chico said, what are you talking about? And we told him. He told me, he told us a story at breakfast. He said that they went to Bulgaria and they watched the Bulgarians. And they go, oh, my God, that's some of the worst form I've ever seen. It's 1996, if I recall. He said, we're going to kick their ass at the Europeans. Well, they showed up the Europeans and the Russian opened up in the, in the snatch and he closed one lift. He closed. He couldn't get any better. The, the Bulgarian came out with the bigger weight, of course, does an ugly lift, white lights, an uglier lift, white lights, another one. Strength's more important than speed. <laughs> it seems... It, it, it's not gymnastics, not ice skating. You're not getting perfect tens here, guys. You need to lift some freaking weights. From observing the weightlifters that you've worked with and other athletes from different sports, not only the training is different from what they're used to, and normally they're all so out of shape it takes them a minute oh. to get into shape, but their mindset changes. And that, to me, seems to be the big difference that we've had Olympic lifters who came in here who wouldn't talk to anyone, who start walking out with their head held high. And it's, a lot of that comes from the mindset you instill. Could you talk about that a little bit? They also start running their mouth. They come in, they're quiet as a mouse. I don't know what the hell they're thinking because they suck. And they come in and like me, me Ahmed, you know, we had to get Ahmed fired up. We, he missed the clean twice. We get up his ass, and he makes the clean. I go, why did you make that? Because now you're putting out because we're on you. I mean, I'm going like this is pathetic pathetic to me and so he gets a clean record but we had to be on him that's what i, I watched um i watched tape and the guy's taking a record and everyone else is sitting there on the couch just sitting there daydreaming they need to be helping each other you don't have any music in your training halls you're lucky to have a glued hand bench in there uh what's it tommy what does china have of ours atp inverse curl reverse hyper yeah thank you yeah. maybe you guys ought to have the same thing because it will help you dramatically. We do a lot of power cleans in the belt squat machine. Belt around your waist. Did I come up this? No. The Russians did. Years ago, they did power cleans in the belt squats. With belt squats. And push jerks. So, you need to do these things. You need, if you branch out, like if I put them, I tell people, if I put a million dollars under a rock in a parking lot, and you walk out there, 
and you pick up a rock and there's no millionaire there, I'll bet your ass you're going to pick up every rock in that parking lot. If I give you the conjugate system as a method of training that gives you a lot of variables, right? It's your job to find which ones work. And you find out the five or six exercises that work, you're, you're on the road. It'll take you as high as your potential. I can't go higher than your potential. Like I tell people here, I can get you up to here. It's your balls got to get you up to there. You got to have balls. I mean, you just got to. Um, before we conclude, we've had numerous Olympic weightlifting coaches come in here. And since I've been here, I've been here over 10 years, and I've seen the all come in and say the same things. We're going to crush it. We're follow west side. None of them really follow west side. They try their best, but they don't. What do you have to say to the coaches? Like, what can they do to improve? Like, have you ever shut down your doors to a coach for information? Never. Of any kind. Yeah. Well, what is the big, why don't they come here and what can they do? Well, that's a good question because I, I know two old master sport coaches in the old Soviet Union. They wouldn't let them coach. Dr. Mel Seth wanted to go to Colorado and help them. They refused him. It's uh, Chuck Noon's, um, I told you about 501 clean jerk, 380 snatch years ago. They, I said, why don't you help them? said, they don't want me to help them. I've heard this over and over and over. Open your doors to people. It's, I mean, it's an embarrassment. It's, it's, I mean, it's just an embarrassment. I, I love the sport. It's a great sport. It's a beautiful sport. But my God, you got to get better at it. You know, how, we, we win everything in the Olympics. There's nothing we can't win medals in except that sport. And it doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, people say, well, the NFL's got all, our, got all the people. I haven't seen 132-pound NFL players lately. Maybe you have. I haven't. You know, they're out there. Like I said, <clears throat> another thing that kills them, Tom, <clears throat> Go to soccer field here in Columbus. How many kids play soccer? 5,000? You know, go play basketball camp. How many got? 5,000? Football camp. 5,000? Baseball camp. 5,000? Weightlifting camp. Five? <laughs> what the hell? If you don't have a big base, remember what I say? A pyramid is only as tall as its base. You need a base. You've got to start with elementary kids and give them medals or something. You know, all you got to do is go to a few schools, donate a set of weights, and some half ass coach to help them. Mm -hmm. And, and then go on to, uh, what's the next, the elementary school, junior high, and then high school, and have and present college, um, um, you know, uh, scholarships. Well, why, you know, there are throwers in this country. Um, you know, Joe, what's his name? Is Kovacs. In the, Kovacs. Comes in my gym. He's a shot putter. Now, he's big, 6'4". Uh, I'm a 74-foot shot putter. He's 300 pounds. I set the pins at chest level in my power rack. He takes 545 and bangs it up into him for a triple. Well, what if he Olympic? Well, he has, he's, a, he's a thrower. Thrower needs traps. That's why they do it. But what? But you can't get an Olympic lift here to budge 545, let alone bang it up, up into here at nipple height. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going, holy crap. I'm going to rip, rip my power rack out of the floor. And that's what they need. Is over, we're going to overabundance the strength. Watch the Chinese... Read my book. There's a book about Chinese, but it doesn't have workouts. My book has workouts. I don't know why people are so against it. When I used Olympic weightlifting methodologies to get where I am, I knew back then Olympic powerlifting, the, what was the, the grind? Slow. <clears throat> We're all slow. Well, we lift bigger weights. Larger weights move slow. The velocity is going to slow down. There are bigger weights. Funny thing about gravity, how that works. But I realized we had to be faster. I didn't even pay no attention to Olympic lifting. But then I got to thinking one day, they've got to be able to move weights slower. Because when weights get bigger, they're slower, and they can't move them. You can just dump 10 pounds, and they're dead. They could do, I've seen a guy do six triples. I could jump him 10, 15 pounds. He can't even make one. I'm going, like, what in the hell? They've like got a governor in their brain. Their central nervous system is almost like an adornage runner. He's never going to put out. They're very good at doing very little. And so you got to get them where they learn to put out. That's why you got to do the two, two max effort workouts a week where you're doing six on one day and, uh, you know, uh, well, ours is on Wednesday and um, a Monday and six the other day. The other two days are dedicated to speed. We do 25 squats and 25 pulls. I'm asking you guys to maybe do, you know, 18 squats, 18 pulls or, or uh, 18 uh, snatches and 18 clean var variations. Change the variation. Every three weeks, change. Um, because you guys, if you know what the law of accommodation are, 
there should be a picture of it in a, in a, in a you know, Webster's Dictionary because you do the same thing over and over and over. The only thing that's going to happen will get worse. It can't get better. It's impossible. If you spell your name, the only thing you can do is spell it wrong. You can't spell it better. You can only spell it wrong. And that's what happens in Olympic weightlifters. It's the law of accommodation, and they suffer terribly. They don't know how to use a wave periodization. All my weights, I don't do tens. I do tens and tricep extensions and back raises, not the classical lifts. And why do I do fives? People ask me in our sport, why do you do fives? You used to do twos. Because I can move five it's just as fast as two. I put out the same force, so why wouldn't I? Now I'm getting greater muscle tension, carrying a bar for five, five reps instead of two. And like I said, the last 16 months, I, I, have the young, I have the lightest person, 122 pounds squat, 700. You know, I mean, I, it's, it's, uh, but seven, seven squat workouts, two bench workouts, and three total workouts. I mean, that's in the last 16 months. And, we're, and uh, two months from now, we're going to break some more. <laughs> I hope this isn't the last conversation we have in this. I'm going to assume from the content it's not. But Lou, what I would like to do is reach out to these coaches. I'd love to get them down here and to talk to them. Because I think if you talk to these coaches to see where are they sticking, like what are they not doing and why aren't they open, I think that would make for some great information for people. I've never had one ask me how I use bands. Why not one. Why do you think that is? I, because they're just a closed group of guys. You know, powerlifters, anyone know everything. I'll steal, my, I'll steal everything from you. I'll steal everything from you. That's very true. And I'm going to make my guys yeah. win. But they don't want to do this. You know, you're not, the coach is not responsible for the coach. He's responsible for the lifters that he's coaching. you got to look like that. Every day, I worry about my guys, you know. I mean, my guys, they make a progress. It's on me. I, there's an old story about Olympic weightlifter Igor or something. Igor go to meet and he'd screw up. And they'd go, Igor, what happened? What happened? He'd go and he'd screw up. What happened, Igor? Then he got, you know, real good and he won world championships. And he started coaching. His lifters would screw up and they'd go, Igor, what happened? <laughs> it was always on Igor. It was never on the – so it's always on me. I look at it, it's always on me. I don't take any credit for their success, only that they're smart enough to do it. But if they screw up, it's me. The NFL, someone pulls a hamstring, it's the coach. You can cry your ass off. The coach has got to have enough sense to learn how to train hamstrings, and they don't. That's why I got all the knee injuries. No one's got necks anymore. That's why I got neck injuries. It's a different sport. But mm -hmm. all they got to do is you'll go back in history and look at football players next and train their damn hamstrings. And they, same thing. Close, you can't be closed-minded. You know, people's going to argue with me, right? And he's argue, out, argue with Albert Einstein. And Einstein said, you can win an argument with an intelligent man, but you never win an argument with an ignorant man. And I'll, I'll close there. Lou, thank you so much. You're welcome.